Last night, I talked about the incredibly strong quarter from Micron, the commodity semiconductor maker. But they're not the only ones in the industry saying amazing things. Yesterday, we also got some very positive news from Applied Materials, the big semiconductor capital equipment play. It was at their analyst day. According to the company, their end markets are looking very good thanks to strong demand for all sorts of chips. Even better, Applied Materials gave us an extremely bullish long-term forecast through 2020. You know, not many companies can think that far out. Oh, and they rolled out a $3 billion buyback, which is pretty substantial even for this $52 billion company. Stock roared up more than 6% yesterday, gained another 3.6% today. But if management's right about the business's long-term prospects, then it could have a lot more room to run. So let's check in with Gary Dickerson. He, Gary is the president and CEO of Applied Materials, get a better sense of how his company's doing and where it's headed. Mr. Dickerson, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, Gary. Oh, Have a seat. Good to see you, Jim. Thank, first of all, I am honored that you come on the show. I have long admired your company. And happy 50th anniversary. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Times have never been better at Applied Materials. I think that's true, but I want to let's start uh, at, at the 30,000-foot level because in your unbelievably good presentation, which is available to everyone, you say, and I think you mean it, our vision is to make possible technology that shapes the future. It is really what you do. Absolutely. Every advanced display and semiconductor chip in the world is made with our products. And our value is increasing. In the last four years, our percentage of total electronics has doubled. Semiconductor content is increasing. The capital intensity in display mm -hmm. and semiconductors is also increasing. Display allowing us to have bendable things that we've never dreamed of, right? Large screen TVs, right. uh, the, the foldable uh, mobile devices, organic LED displays. Right. Uh, all of that is made with applied materials. Every TV on the wall, right. all the smartphones in our pockets, all of that's made with applied materials. Now, I want you to talk to us about inflection points. Absolutely. Because there are gigantic inflection points Absolutely. in technology, and you've been involved. With everyone. Yes. Yeah, probably the biggest thing that's happening right now, uh, you see an explosion of data. All, everything is smart today, as you know, as you right. talk about all the time. Right. Uh, you're storing more of that information. So memory chips are increasing. And in the future, the biggest inflection that's going to change all of our lives is AI and big data. And in AI and big data, data many people talk about is very similar to oil. But oil, is no value unless you process it and put it into something like an automobile. So the same thing is true with data. You have to have high performance computing to turn that data into value. And many people talk about this inflection being the biggest in our lifetimes. Right. Bigger than the PC, bigger than the cell phone. Absolutely. Trillions of dollars right. of economic value being created and disrupted. And at the foundation of all of that is applied materials. Well, what this sounds like is there were times when I know there would be critics of the industry saying it was boom bust. Yes. This does not sound like anything that can be boom bust. No, I mean, we, everybody has long memories of the boom bust. <laughs> it used to be PC Enterprise, everybody yes, waiting for the operating exactly. system upgrades. Then it went to mobile and social media. Pervasive. Everybody, billions of people with data centers in their pocket, annual war for leadership, Christmas and Chinese right. New Year. But in the future, you've got transportation, healthcare, entertainment. All of these industries will change in, in amazing ways and create trillions of dollars of economic value. So you also have this war for AI architecture right. leadership. Right. That probably will be the biggest battle of our lifetime. But aren't you the arms merchant? Aren't we you on every side? You know I love <laughs> NVIDIA. You're deeply involved Absolutely. with NVIDIA. Absolutely. Uh, those chips, Jim, are very, very, they're huge, 10 times bigger than an application processor. They're incredibly complex. And the power and the performance, the materials right. that create the power and performance comes from applied materials. So in that war for AI architecture leadership, Applied will win no matter who ends up winning. Now, you mentioned the Chinese New Year, which reminds me <laughs> that you are maybe one of our dominant manufacturers in China. Absolutely. This year we'll do close to $3 billion That's in fun. China. Uh, extremely high market share uh, in both display and semiconductor chips mm -hmm. in China. We have a very, very, very strong position. You also, I have to give you your due on, on materials innovation. I think there's no other company that has figured out how to make these things, how to do Moore's Law, basically. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you look at transistors, uh, the interconnect right, that right. wires everything together, right. those materials come from applied materials. 
Uh, the same thing is true when you look at the organic LED displays right. that are on mobile devices, those wraparound displays. Yes. That innovation, it comes from our equipment. Now, let's just talk about where we are in the cycle. You talked a lot about how this time the investment in wafer fab equipment is extraordinary versus other eras. Yes. Again, it comes back to PC Enterprise. Right. People all still remember boom bust. I know, and I'm victim of that because <laughs> I'm old enough to remember. That's why I wanted you on because I want people to forget that and think yes. about the future. Yeah, you know, Jim, as you know, people have long memories. I know. So now you have billions of users. Every year you have this war for mobility leadership, uh, and, and it's pervasive. So the business has fundamentally changed. If you go back uh, to 2010 going forward, we haven't had any down cycles. No, isn't the, that incredible? The, the volatility has decreased by a factor of three from PC and enterprise. Now, there are still plenty of people who say, wait a second, we get that marginal chip made by the marginal semiconductor company and the whole thing goes down. Micron, people cheered when they said no new capacity. How do we deal with this Scylla and Charybdis? We want these companies to do well. We want them to buy a lot of your equipment, but yeah. we're always afraid they buy too much equipment then there are too many <laughs> chips. Yes, so one of the things that's happening right now is an explosion of data. Right. And if you look at memory shipments, memory shipments are tracking very closely to this explosion of data. Okay. Uh, in the data center, the solid state drives are taking more of the hard drive market. Right. right. And there's tremendous economic value there. Uh, if, if you go into a data center, you see that a lot of the cost comes from power consumption and heat, right. basically. Right. And the, the solid state drives now with new memory devices, they can take 35% of that hard drive market. It's tremendously economical. These drivers on smart everything, uh, data center, they were never there in the past. They're there today, and that is only going to keep growing going well, into the and future. You say that because it's not just humans who are creating the data. We're not that big a portion of the data. Well, you know, there's models, Jim. A, right. lot, of, a lot of big companies are, are, have models on where is data generated in the future. Right. So if you look at a smart city, all of the different sources of data the model suggests that people will only generate 1%. So when we see these nonlinear inflections, right. it's hard for all of us. We have long memories of where the past was. It's hard for us to extrapolate anything that's nonlinear going in the future. Well, I've got to tell you, Mr. Morgan taught me a great deal. He's done many, many years at the company, and you've taught me a great deal. And people have to understand, this is a company you revere and a stock you don't trade, you own. That's Gary Dickerson. He's the president and CEO of Applied Materials. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.